All right. So in this video, I'm going to try to describe some strategies for making strong attacks in Twinkle Star Sprites. I've been meaning to make a video about this for kind of a long time actually, but never got around to it. But lately I've I've been talking to some players who I've tried to describe this to in the past, but it seems like they didn't fully know what's going on with this kind of stuff. So I figured I'd just finally make the video. So anyway, what I'm going to describe here basically is how to make your attacks utilize the strongest type of fireball, which is the parabolic fireball, and how to remove slowdown. In other words, how to make your attacks faster. Right. So first, let me just play this part of the video here. I've drawn these crappy arrows on the screen. I'll describe them later. But first let's just let's just see this sequence. So I'm I'm on the right here. And basically this this exchange, here we go. This is a pretty strong attack. Right. So if you'll pay attention, I guess, to the the trajectory of the fireballs. Right. Here they're moving like this along these arrows. Here they're doing this, bouncing off the ceiling. Here they're stopping at the top left and falling down. And now they're again arcing over and moving really fast. So, how to describe this? Basically what's going on here from about this point on is I've made it so that the fireballs will be parabolic and I'm preventing the game from slowing down by not causing any explosions. Right, you'll see the game speeds up at about this instant, yes. Which makes the attack, of course, harder to dodge. Now the ways you do this requires knowledge of some stuff that I think a lot of people don't know, so I'll try to describe it here. So basically, there's three types of fireballs in this game. There's diagonal, vertical, parabolic. And basically the different types target the other player in different ways, right? Diagonal shoots up to the top of the screen, bounces off the ceiling, and then again goes straight back down, targeting the other player, moving in a diagonal sort of way. Vertical does a similar thing, where it flies to the top, but it doesn't bounce off, instead it just falls slowly. And these try to go above the other player. It's aimed in that sense. And then parabolic just arcs over directly. It doesn't need to go to the ceiling first. And these, the fireballs you'll tend to notice, they, they do, they come in groups that all move the same way, right? And so you'll ask, how do you control it? Well, there's a cycle, right? It goes from diagonal to vertical to parabolic, and then back to diagonal, and it just keeps repeating. The timing for when it switches is when a new Zako formation enters the screen. So if we go back and look, we should be able to tell. So here, uh, here I'm on parabolic, right? 
the fireballs are arcing across like this. Here it's diagonal. At the same time, see this, uh, it's the spinning circle formation. You can see it start to appear here. Just as this shows up, the fireball switch to diagonal. And now here they've switched to vertical. There's a new formation already. It's exploding off screen, so it's kind of hard to tell. This is the, uh, it's the one with the three rotating lines. I can tell because I've played this game too much. But basically that's the one it is. I'm on vertical now and I'm going to switch to parabolic here. A new, a new formation just came in. Here's the rest of it. So now my attacks will be parabolic. Right. As you can see. So you can anticipate when you're going to get parabolic fireballs and try to remove slowdown when they show up. And that's just something you can do in general. And I think that much is what players have understood, at least the players I've tried to explain this to. But the other thing that's going on here, that's maybe a little harder to notice, requires that you recognize the way the game generates attacks. So when you accumulate a lot of attacks in this game, when you when you do something that you would expect would like send 10 or 15 bullets all at once, the game doesn't actually do that. It'll send like, I don't know, five or six at once. But then it saves the rest and starts sending them one by one over time. And so as you keep generating more attacks, the game just accumulates them. It basically queues them up and sends them one at a time. So you can see over this whole sequence, I'm not, my attacks are going one by one. You know, it's fast, they're appearing fast, but they're appearing one at a time. The whole way through here. So, when the game does this, when the game queues up fireballs, it doesn't keep track of the trajectory type that they should have been when they were initially created, when they were initially added to the queue. Rather, the trajectory of the fireballs is determined when they physically appear. So if you accumulate a bunch of fireballs during the diagonal and vertical phase, those fireballs can appear as parabolic if they take that long to show up, right? So when you get to the parabolic phase and you've accumulated a huge attack, by holding your fire at that moment and leaving the Zako on screen, you can send all of your accumulated attacks as parabolic. So see, at this point, I know I'm on parabolic phase now, and as long as these green and blue Zako aren't destroyed, I'm going to stay on parabolic, right? So by holding my fire here, not only not only do I remove slowdown, but I sustain the parabolic phase. I extend the duration of it to send all of these fireballs in the strongest possible way, right? So, obviously it's pretty complicated, right? This isn't like a, this isn't something you can learn to do overnight. But basically, what you want to look for is keep track of your fireball type, right? Notice when you're sending parabolic, switching to diagonal, switching to vertical. And now, when you see this, when you see vertical, and you know you've accumulated a huge attack, especially when you've advanced through the formations quickly. That's another thing. Right, look. Right here, 
this is the formation that begins the diagonal phase. And look how quickly it dies, right? It's basically killed instantly. So then I already go, see, even the next formation is here, and it's exploding off screen. And this is the vertical formation. And so now it's dead. So why? And th this is even the, this is the parabolic one right here. So because I just went through two formations almost instantly, I know I've acute, and I'm in fever, of course, I know I've accumulated, or was I in fever? It might have worn off. I am here. Yeah. It mostly was in fever. So anyway, I know I've accumulated a ton of attacks, and I'm going right into the parabolic phase. So I know this is a good opportunity to stop shooting, because I'll have a lot of parabolic fireballs saved up. Right, so you you want to track the types of fireballs you're sending, how many you've accumulated, and whether or not you're going to be able to keep the the parabolic associated Zako on screen and be able to remove soda, right? So when you can combine all of that, keep the extended parabolic phase and remove slowdown at the same time, you can make the strongest possible attacks, right? Those those things are strong on their own. It's strong to stay on parabolic even if you don't remove slowdown. And it's strong to remove slowdown even if it's not on parabolic. So, you know, you can try to do those things whenever you see the opportunity, right? Like, you can always, in fever, stop shooting when you get to parabolic, but it won't necessarily be effective. You have to be mindful of these things. But when you can, and you can notice the opportunity presents itself, you can make attacks like this. And you know, this, of course, is a pretty terrifying attack. What's happening? These fireballs moving this fast for this long. He does kind of bomb for no reason here, but anyway. I think that's all I wanted to say about it. You know, another shitty, lazy video. I, I don't I don't edit. I just ramble. So hopefully this was coherent.